Well, hello and welcome to today's episode of the Power of Your Mind podcast. You're listening to episode number 127. I'm Victoria Gallagher, Law of Attraction hypnotist and number one best-selling author of Practical Law of Attraction, Align Yourself with the Manifesting Conditions and Successfully Attract Your Desires. I'm also the founder of HipTalk.com and HypnoCloud apps, which gives you access to over 500 hypnosis recordings right in the palm of your hand. So be sure to download that app from the app stores. And today I have a very special guest with me, Crystal and Mark Victor Hansen. Crystal Dwyer Hansen is an international speaker, researcher, corporate consultant, author, and entrepreneur. Her expertise is in the field of human potential. Through her years spent as a transformational life coach and wellness nutrition expert, she's seen people experience profound and lasting transformation in relationships, career, health, and wellness by tapping into their inner resources. Crystal's personal coaching, speaking, CD, video programs, books, and articles have helped people all over the world. She is a member of the International Coaching Federation, a certified clinical hypnotherapist, and founder of Crystal Vision Life and Skinny Life, a wellness company and author of Skinny Life, The Secret to Being physically, emotionally, and spiritually fit. She travels the world with her husband, best-selling author and entrepreneur, Mark Victor Hansen, speaking and inspiring and teaching leadership. Mark Victor Hansen is also best known as the co-author for Chicken Soup for the Soul book series and brand, setting world records in book sales with over 500 million books sold. Mark also worked his way into a worldwide spotlight as a sought after keynote speaker and entrepreneurial marketing maven creating a stream of successful people who have created massive success for themselves through Mark's unique teachings and wisdom. With his enduring charismatic style, Mark captures his audience's attention as well as their hearts. Having spoken to over 6,000 audiences worldwide with his one-of-a-kind technique and masterful authority of his work, time and again he continues to receive high accolades from his audiences of one of the most dynamic and compelling speakers and leaders of our time mark and his beautiful wife crystal dwyer hansen have co-written their newest book to be released in april 2020 the uh, called ask and the bridge from your dreams to your destiny. Together, they are owners of Natural Power Concepts and a Hawaii-based company focused on cleaning up the planet through natural energy devices. They live a happy and beautiful life in Scottsdale, Arizona, just right down the street from me. <laughs> and so they're, they're gonna talk about their recent book, Ask the Bridge, from your dreams to destiny. They're gonna share some of their insights on how to do that. So welcome to the show, Crystal and Mark Victor Hansen. Thank you, Victoria. We're so happy to be here with you. I am so happy you're here. Yes. So yeah, I actually met um, Mark many, many years ago, like 25 years ago at Principia. <laughs> I have my little picture. <laughs> I got to tell you, I love doing all those talks at Principi. I got to do leadership there for whatever I tell you, 14 or 20 years. It's, uh, you know, Jane, Jane Walheit, and, and uh, the whole Motley crew is just wonderful. It, it, it was a blessing to me. So I hope you enjoyed whatever I presented. Oh, I absolutely did. And yeah, I mean, size seminars is, I mean, that's where I got my, my breakthrough to leaving the stockbroker field to becoming a hypnotherapist. So. <laughs> So well, tell Bob's us just delivering those seminars, I'll tell you. 
Oh, it was amazing. It was amazing. I, I met uh, Bob, Bob Proctor there too before. I think you were at the same Principia that he presented at. So um, that was before The Secret, before anybody knew about all this crazy stuff. <laughs> so tell us a little bit about yourselves and your background and you know what eat, uh, got you each started in this wellness and self-development world. So, um, yeah, I'm a transformational life coach and clinical hypnotherapist. And I just, um, you know, I grew up in a family of nine children. And I was always fascinated with the way that all of us, um, our lives unfolded in s such different ways. Um, even though we were raised by the, <laughs> the same two parents eating out of the same refrigerator with the same rules. But what seemed to make the biggest difference are those little micro choices we were making every day. And I just, I was always fascinated with that, what, how the mind works. And um, I used to be in building and real estate and I, my cabinet guy walked in one day and I said, Tony, you look amazing. You've lost all this weight and uh, you look better than I've ever seen you. He's like, well, I stopped smoking and I lost a bunch of weight. I was like, whoa, wait, that doesn't work. How do you just stop smoking and lose weight? That's counterintuitive. Usually you gain weight. He said, I went to see this hypnotherapist and he hypnotized me. I listened to for 30 days to this audio. Uh, he hypnotized me to never crave cigarettes again and be able to sit in an environment. It didn't matter if anyone's smoking. Listen to it for 30 days and I can sit in a bar. People can be smoking and I don't crave it at all. And I lost weight. Um, so I've never felt better. And I was hooked. I had actually returned to college to go get my psychology degree. And I'm like, nope, I, I, I'm taking a detour because that's what I want. I knew, I've always intuitively known that we all have a tremendous amount of control over the outcome of our lives. I saw it again and again in my own family. Just like I said, those little micro decisions that we all make each and every day, the way we view something, the way we look at something, the way the questions that we ask about ourselves and others, um, and always questioning the truth and the reality of things, right? And how, how we create our own reality. So I ended up going, you know, headlong into alternative, at a, the biggest holistic college in the country, getting trained in, you know, life coaching and hypnotherapy. And I just became obsessed. I took every course. I studied up with Deepak Chopra, became certified in meditation instruction, all of those things, because I think I wanted to share with people that nothing in your life is fixed in stone and mm -hmm. everything changed if you understand the tools that will change your life. And that's why Mark and I wrote the book, Ask, because we came down to that one thing. People have way more talent and ability than they'll ever use in four lifetimes. But we were observing, why are some people, this guy could be running a city, yet he's really hardly getting by. And this woman could be, you know, uh, heading the head of a corporation, but she can barely make ends meet. What's stopping them? And we, it came down, if you could give someone that one tool that we felt like was the most important, it's the ability to ask for what you want in life. Ask boldly for what you want. It's so true. You know, so many people have so much potential just waiting to be tapped into, unlimited potential, but they reject themselves first because they don't ask. Correct. That's true. And, and so my story, as you know, is my parents were Danish immigrants. We didn't have any books around the house. And then all of a sudden I got hooked on reading, got in college and fortuitously got with the smartest guy on the planet, Bucky, Dr. Buckminster Fuller, Einstein, best student. And he just took my little brain and said, holy cow, you could be a comprehensivist. I learned stuff. When I heard Fuller speak, he said 10 words I'd never heard. Like we're going to talk about cosmogony, cosmology. You know, we're going to talk about synergetic, energetic, and I'm sitting there thinking I'm going to be a doctor of physiology, and I'm smart, and I'm an A student, and I'm, oh my God, I don't know any of this stuff. <laughs> anyway, I tried to be Bucky, went bankrupt, my best worst experience, became a speaker, and when I'm out speaking, people said, yeah, that story in a book, and so I started writing all the stories, did a book. In the first year I did it, I tripled my income and doubled my time off, so I thought, wow, this is really cool. I sold 20 <laughs> At ten dollars each, made two hundred thousand dollars. I've made about seventy grand before that. And I've even written a little book about that called "You Have a Book in You Now." Which, if people go to my website, Mark Victor Hansen, I teach them how to do all that stuff. Because everyone, like you're saying, has unlimited potential. I mean, and right now, being that we're in this COVID experience worldwide, eight billion of us are in a cocoon. Right? Our, our metaphor, our corporate symbol is a butterfly, as you know, 
the universal symbol of, of freedom. And I wrote that book, One Minute Millionaire, which has made more millionaires than any other book since Napoleon Hill. It's oh, I have that one Napoleon. too. <laughs> well, thank you. Yeah. Bless your heart. Uh, thank you for being a fan. By the way, doing these podcasts literally around the world has blown our minds. How many yeah. people have read that? And the last guy we just talked to made $20 million because of that. I went, because, you know, unless you, unless we came out and did these podcasts, we would know, but we're literally doing them around yeah. the world and selling books because everybody has to go to Amazon now because most bookstores are still closed. Anyhow, yeah. what we're saying, we broke through for us. And like Crystal said, what we learned about asking is that we're asking everybody to read our book, learn how to ask because our destiny is helping you find your destiny because everybody has this great destiny. Mm -hmm. And you as a hypnotherapist absolutely know that you can unlock somebody's freedom once they know where they got to go. Absolutely. Absolutely. So how did you guys decide to come together on this book? That's such a great question, Victoria, because <laughs> we've never co-authored books and we're like, how is this going to go? We didn't know. Like, but we just, you know, sat down together and decided the basic structure um, and the basic themes that we agreed upon um, really examining our own lives and how, the ability to ask really uh, helped resurrect us and helped us reinvent ourselves again and again and again. And then at, we decided to interview like 26 different people. Some are really amazing, you know, like super successful billionaires. Some are just, you know, amazing people living um, simple lives. But with all of the people, they, they were able to take the asking journey and ask the right questions that always led them to a better place or realization that they were stuck because they weren't asking. And so what we discovered is that there are three channels through which to ask. And those channels are ask yourself, ask others, and ask God. And that each one of those channels is equally important. And that most people who we would consider master askers deploy all of those channels regularly in their lives to achieve the success they're getting and the happiness and the well-being that they're getting. That makes a lot of sense. So, so you need to be aligned with asking yourself, ask others, and ask God. So it's kind of like, in a way, um, like body, mind, spirit, because asking yourself is like asking your body, asking your mind, and then asking spirit. Yeah. Well, like the way I interpret that. <laughs> that's a really good analogy. That's, that's great. Yeah, perfect, Victoria. So but Jack and I wanted the best title for our book once we'd uh, coalesced in mind and spirit and had, had got this killer book. We didn't know we were going to get 144 rejections. <laughs> we went inside our deeper mind because as a hypnotherapist, you know that we, we did what's called a thought command, right? Whether you get it from Young or whoever. We said 100, relatively 100 times in our respective homes, Mega best selling title, mega best selling title, mega best selling title. Jack calls me about 2.58 in the morning, wakes up the whole office before cell phones. And uh, I said, he said, chicken soup. I said, for the soul. I said, that's it. I got goosebumps. That's it. Oh, I love it. Uh, the publishers didn't see it. So what I'm saying here is ask yourself, ask others, and ask God. Everyone needs to ask God, God, what's your destiny for me? God, what's your destiny for me? God, what's your destiny for me? Because you know consciousness and subconscious or mind and brain. Brain is inventory, but mind is thinking. Mind is not of the body, right? And that's why it, when you hypnotize somebody, you can get them out of their sidereal time and go to this plastic universe. It's sort of a living hologram. And you can find out what you're supposed to do and then go manifest it. Yes, absolutely. I do. I believe that if you're following your destiny, it's much easier to manifest because otherwise you're just kind of hitting a brick wall and, and the universe is trying to send you in the right direction, <laughs> but you're not listening. Look, for a decade, we, you know, we sold chicken soup and made a fortune. And then we said, well, I'm supposed to finish all the stuff Bucky asked me to do with, we got pop-up windmills that are called urban wind called wind charger. And we just got the biggest order ever in history. And we're going to do really cool stuff. But we decided that then our destiny is writing books to help people find their destiny. Mm -hmm. And what's happened is that we've now got all these publishers come to us and ask us to do 12 books. Like I just showed you, you have a book in you, but then there's a bunch of other books for it behind it. She's got a bunch of other contracts. And, and you're right. Once you are on your destiny path, everything gets out of the way. And the world tends to move out of the way for somebody that is in alignment with their destiny. And the law of attraction 
whole, I mean, we're being inundated with good. And then I'll just do the subset, you know, for the last seven months. I mean, when we came out with the book, we had one talk of 11,000 people, the next talk with 15,000 and a guy calls up and said, oh yeah, yeah, I lost $5 million. Oh, the man. government won't let me have this and you're not coming and you're not getting paid. And I go, okay, okay. Uh, listen, when it opens up, we'll do it. But suddenly in the last couple of days now, the whole world is unfolding again yeah. because people are saying, hey, I'm tired of this. It isn't the way it really is. We're going to have to go out and mingle and, and live. Good. Very good. I love it. So we're all born with a destiny. You say that our job is to discover it by asking the right question. So how do we come up with those questions that are truly going to make an impact? So it starts with asking those questions of yourself because it's just shocking to me, Victoria, how um, few people take the time to sit down with themselves and really do this. What it's like, it's the self-reflection, right? Mm -hmm. Asking yourself the questions. And we say there are like three critical phases to a the asking yourself part. And those fa question phases are, where am I right now? Right? Because mm -hmm. you will never figure out where you want to go until you understand where you are right now. Where am I right now? What's really going on? You know, am I having any success at this thing that I'm doing? Am I even enjoying what I'm doing? Mm. Have I taken the time to explore what I would really enjoy? All of these things that'll start to give you answers and give you clarity if you'll just simply sit down and ask yourself those questions. And then the critical phase number two is, so the first one is, where am I now? Second one is, where do I want to be? Mm -hmm. You know, we don't check in with ourselves enough. We just keep sort of hurtling through space going, 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 and not stopping to say, is this really what I want? Is this <laughs> what I'm supposed to be doing? Yeah. Is this what I want to be, right? Is this my ultimate destiny? You know, and asking all those questions, where, where do I want to be? And Mark and I like to engineer it backwards and say, um, in my ideal scenario of success or in my ideal scenario of a, the greatest relationship, what does that look like? What am I doing every day? How are we talking to each other? Who, you know, uh, how are we relating to each other in the relationship case? In the case of the career success is like, who am I talking to? What people am I interacting? Who are my uh, greatest customers? Who are my best clients? Who are my uh, you know, greatest advocates? What's important to me each and every day in this perfect scenario of success? You know, and when you start to ask yourself those questions, it is amazing the treasures that will unfold in those answers because you start asking and suddenly you go, you get a solution. You go, Oh, I didn't see that before. You keep asking more questions and you get an illumination that was never there before. You see it in a way you never did before because the studies show that when you start asking yourself questions, a different part of your mind lights up for you. It's a different part of your brain. It's a part of your brain that does critical thinking. So literally when we start asking ourselves those questions, our brain becomes a greater resource to us, yet most people don't do it. This is why we wrote the book. We want to help everybody start asking those right questions. And then the final uh, question, the third one of that critical phase is, so it's where am I now? Where do I want to be? And what specific action do I need to take to get there? So all the little sub questions that would come after, after that, who's doing what I want to be doing? Who's doing it successfully? How long have they been doing it? How do I reach out to them? Where are they? Where do I find the people who are immersed in this place that I want to be? And how will I connect? And then take the action. Take the action, right? That makes so much sense. It's, it's like a map that gives you, you know, the answers to exactly how to get where you want to be. But so, so many people are just operating on autopilot and just assuming that this is all there is instead of really like being with where am I, where do I want to go? How do I get there? And who's doing it? And all of the other things, like you just mentioned, it simplifies it to. So what we've discovered that fits exactly what you're saying is to get them out of autopilot. Whatever we're asking everyone to get a copy. I ask it at Amazon and then yep. do two other things. One is, get another buddy that gets it and then go over every one of the mm -hmm. questions and go together and literally write them out. So that's number one. Number two is that once you got the book, go to, we've created a new thing called askthebookclub.com. Just type it in and we're going to have a book club that you get to come to for free. 
Ooh, and awesome. get everyone to be master askers so they get to their destiny by going across that bridge, which we didn't, we couldn't figure out a better way to help transform the people. And I can tell you the sales are just rocking because people are doing it. And I mean, the people say, I cry, I laugh, I cry, I laugh. I can't believe your book's touching me. And it, it re-vectored me, it re-pivoted me in the most you know this we're saying we're, everybody's in this cocoon but we're going to come out as a big high flying destiny oriented butterfly well i am really excited to read this and i'm really excited to get a buddy and become a master asker i mean and help other people to become master askers as well uh, you know i i just i think it's so important to um to have somebody to work with and so i you know just doing it by yourself you feel like you're alone or nobody else gets it but if you have somebody to to you know also be doing this book with you and these days you can do it over zoom <laughs> i mean zoom has really helped us all and that's i think that really goes into the ask yourself part victoria mm -hmm. because this part is so important well we're really connected you know um kind of superficially through social media and stuff we need to really forge those deeper connections because human beings are here to be one another's greatest resource you know so we the ask others part is super important we don't ask other people enough and what mark and i discovered is that people are really scared and really kind of disoriented um and afraid when it comes to asking other people for really anything and the studies that we did uh that we looked at on that are so interesting because people going into the study when they interviewed them they said well you know what's your perception about asking for favors, help, advice, whatever. And they, their perception was that they would appear to be stupid, uninformed, like if you're asking for advice or information, stupid, uninformed, ignorant, or if you're asking for help of some kind, you would be perceived as being pushy or obnoxious. So, but that's not true. The studies show the reality is if you just go ahead and ask somebody, you're 80% more likely to get your request granted. So you literally have nothing to lose everything to gain everything to gain and you're also giving another human being the opportunity to give to you and that is a gift when we can be a giver mark and i have this section in the book called become a grantor of wishes you know think about how you feel when you're able to do something for another human being help them in some way listen even if it's just giving them a little advice when they say hey can you just hear me out I, i'm kind of confused about this you just give me your best advice, or your thoughts, or your feedback. Why aren't we doing that more with each other? Because we're scared. We think we have to be an island and isolated, and we should know all the answers, right? And it's not true. And so we wrote about the seven roadblocks to success um, in the book, and we found everybody has at least one, if not more, of these roadblocks. And we can go through them if you want. But. Yeah, I, yeah, I'd love to hear about them. I want to tell you, um, you know, when it comes to asking, I mean, it really you know, it, it puts you into a vulnerable space because you have to be willing to hear the word no. And probably if you're asking the right questions, if you're asking, you know, if you're, if you're asking questions that are really pushing you out of your comfort zone, you're going to hear no. And you have to get used to, to the fact, but the more you hear no, the more of a chance you have to hear yes. And I had a, I had a situation where, um, you know, I was doing a lot of uh, Facebook lives for the, uh, for, for my law of attraction, uh, Facebook live. And uh, so I, one of my friends is uh, Bob Doyle and I wanted to have him on the show, but I wasn't asking him to be on the show yet. And, you know, cause it's just like one of those, one of those things. And, uh, and so, Literally, I, as soon as I asked him, he said, oh my God, I was just watching you on Facebook Live and I was wondering, why hasn't she asked me to be on the show yet? <laughs> so yeah. those questions that you're afraid to ask, somebody out there is waiting for you to ask them. <laughs> Bingo. Bingo. Exactly. That's so true. I, I will go through the seven in just one second, but I want to just preface it hitchhiking on what you said. So one of the 26 people we interviewed is Peter Goober. And you can watch this live on, go to YouTube and type in, he's the world's greatest movie maker. We've all seen Rocky, Batman, Lawrence of Olivia, I am the greatest. And he's a close dear friend and we vacationed with him and his wife and we love him. And, but he says, I mean, in this interview, Peter Goober and Mark Victor Hintz on YouTube, he says, 
look, Mark, I'm not dyslexic, but he said, you are so dyslexic, you think no means God. <laughs> <laughs> so you hear the seven, and then you got to look at them, because like Crystal said, all of us have them, and they interchange at different times in our life, different situation and all that. And, and what you do is that once you look at it and hold up the mirror, and it's easy if you've got that buddy partner reading the book with you, you can start to look at it and say, hey, wait a second. I don't want to be unworthy. Unworthiness is number one. Number two is fear. Number three is pattern paralysis. Number four is excusitis. And then you've got a little thing called disconnection, which everyone says, well, I'm not disconnected. I've got a computer and i got a cell phone. No, 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 no. <laughs> it's not being deeply, profoundly connected. Another one just is raw stubbornness. You know, and each of us has to look at our own stuff. And once you look at your stuff, you can overcome it and then go onward, upward, goodward, and Godward all over again. That's amazing. Those, yeah, those are, those are absolutely great steps. So once you have these answers, and this will be like sort of the last question here today. So what, once you have these answers on what you need to do to move forward, how does a person build up that courage and the drive to take that path to fulfill their purpose? You know, um, I think courage is one of those things that you make a decision just to, I mean, you're not, it doesn't mean the absence of fear. It's really a decision to step on your fear with courage. Can I just tell the quickest story from the book? Because Please, do. Great, Please do. Please do. It reminds me a little bit of yours. It's just huge because Lynn Marquis was a woman who came out of college and knew that she wanted to go into the nonprofit space. So she decided to set up this kids camp that was just phenomenal for disadvantaged kids. It was going to be a really long, complete summer camp for those kids whose parents don't know what to do with them during the summer. It was just an incredible experience. So she started looking for the funds, finally got an appointment with the, the richest woman in her city who controlled a large family trust. So the day she showed up at this woman's office for the meeting, she was so nervous. She didn't even know she's going to be able to go through with it. She said she was visibly shaking and, um, because she was just so intimidated by the woman's power and you know uh, notoriety so she walked in and she's like I can't hide my nervousness so I'm just gonna be out with it you know I'm just gonna tell her she's like, I'm, I'm, hi you know my name's Lynn I'm really nervous to be here with you it's just such an honor to meet you and and she could tell she was shaking. she's like it's okay dear you know no problem let's sit down on the couch tell me what you have so Lynn explained everything about the camp the kids with the benefit to everybody and then so the woman asked her well how much are you asking for? Then she got super nervous again. And she goes, I literally stuttered. I couldn't say the word. She goes, I I'm asking for $5,000. That'll cover a a one child for the camp. Oh my and the goodness. Woman said, she goes, but how many children are come do you want to come to the camp to in total? And she said, we'd like to get like, you know, 285 children. She goes, okay, how much is that? I want to underwrite all the children. And Lynn goes, uh, I don't know. Do you have a calculator? <laughs> <laughs> like she couldn't have imagined in her wildest dreams that this woman was going to grant her wish so far beyond what she asked, yet going in, she was scared to death. So all I'm saying to the listeners is you're going to be scared sometimes, but you have to push through it, step on it with some courage to say, I'm going to step on my fear with courage because I don't know when or where the greatest grantor of my wishes is going to come into my path and my life is going to change dramatically, you know? And so it's such an important thing for us to remember. That is, that's a beautiful story. And it's so inspiring and so encouraging for people to realize that, yeah, I mean, you just never know until you ask what the answer is going to be. And it could be beyond your wildest dreams. And then absolutely, the more you ask, the more you're going to get those types of yes responses from people who could help support your dreams. So thank you very much for sharing that and for writing this amazing book. I am so excited to get my hands on it. And I want to make sure that my listeners understand uh, that they can go ahead and get this book today at Amazon. It's Ask the Bridge from your dreams to your destiny. You can get that on Amazon. And also, once you've gotten that book, you can join the Ask Book Club at askthebookclub.com. And get yourself a buddy, get yourself this book, and change your life by learning to ask the right questions of yourself, of others, and of spirit. 
and get on the path to achieving your destiny and your dreams. You deserve it. Thank you guys for being on the show. Thank you well so said. much. Thank you for having oh, yeah. us. And we, we want everyone to ask to fulfill their heart's desire, mentally, physically, financially, socially, spiritually. Yes, absolutely. And my cat, I don't know if you uh, <laughs> can hear her down there. She's asking <laughs> lots of questions during this interview. <laughs> Thank you, Victoria. Great fun. Thanks. Thank you so much.